first speaker is a Finnish novelist, playwright, entrepreneur, activist, and game designer. He has written several published tabletop role-playing games, designed and organized dozens of LARPs, written the manifesto of the Turku School back when he was 21, and uh, in his thesis uh, at university, or in our school, argued uh, on how Aristotle missed out on LARPing on account of living in ancient Greece. Uh, he, he was in his youth uh, a goth idol, but he gave that up to become a middle-aged dad. And as many of you know, middle-aged dadhood uh, involves when you are a LARPer running magic school LARPs. Magic school LARPs are LARPs where the kids play young witches and wizards who go to school to study alchemy, telepathy, healing runes, and other magical topics. This may be the most cutting-edge talk of this whole evening to tell us about something, which I don't know what it is, that happened Last Saturday, please welcome Mike Pohila. Settle down, please. <laughs> this is Pimp My Magic School, where I will tell you about my magic school. As Jok said, the Magic School LARPs are Harry Potter-inspired LARPs for kids. The grown-ups are teachers and children play students who during the LARP go to classes and solve mysteries through the powers of magic and friendship. Now, I know there are these kinds of LARPs in lots of countries. So let's have a show of hands. Is there a Magic School where you come from? Not everywhere. For those of us, for those of you wa looking, watching this at home, maybe half of the room raised their hands. Maybe next year, all of them will have a magic school of their own. So last Saturday, we tried something a little bit different with our magic school. Uh, but for those of you, of you not familiar with the genre, here's a really brief introduction on what they're usually like. We have 50 kids divided into four classes and four houses. The classes are divided mostly by player age. So if you're seven, you play with other seven-year-old witches. Uh, the houses are divided by character traits. So if you're really yes, that's him. So, <laughs> so if you're really creative, uh, you go to the house with the other artsy jokester students. In each class, uh, there are students of each house and vice versa. The day starts with a little ceremony where we sing a song every Finn associates with school, but with altered lyrics. Then there's the first class, then recess, where you hang out with your house. Then second class, then lunch, third class, recess, and fourth class. The game ends with a monster attack or some other climax, where the kids can, which the kids can solve with the skills and spells and clues that they've gathered during the uh, classes and recesses. The day ends with the, a refrain of the school song. The classes can be potions, runes, magical creatures, herbs, telepathy, and many other things. Actually, what there, what there actually are are mini quests with, with chemistry, puzzles, role-playing challenges, and so on. Sometimes there are muggle NPCs to harass. Now, everyone's favorite thing is turning invisible and stealing the candy from the teacher's lounge. And almost but not quite getting caught. <laughs> now, if you do your magic school in a completely different way, please contact me after this. I would love to hear about it. In every magic school LARP we run, the classes and the main plot are different, but the overall structure is always the same. Until now. After COVID, we had lots of kids who started playing when they were seven and were now 12 or 13 and ready to move on to become, uh, be start playing NPCs or magical creatures or something. And we had lots of kids who were seven or eight but had never had a chance to LARP. So last Saturday's magic school had no classes. It was a school celebration where the oldest class graduated and got their diplomas and where newcomers were sorted into houses and initiated into the school. Classic Nordic club stuff. The winner of the house cup was finally chosen after several years of playing. <laughs> and then the monster attacks. <laughs> 
Since it worked quite well, I'll go into some detail. First of all, we had plenty of in-character parents present. Some brought their child to school for the first time. Oh. Others wanted to see their children graduate. I'm very disappointed. And while they're there, they want to make sure their old house wins the cup. To have a meeting of the parents association, and of course, since they're parents, to worship the demon Mammon. <laughs> Basically, the, the grown-ups are destroying the future of the planet for momentary gain for themselves, as we grown-ups tend to do. <laughs> Unlike all the previous magic school LARPs, which were mostly railroaded, with some sandbox elements during recesses and some classes, this LARP was almost all sandbox. We had magical creatures to meet, we had mini quests to win house points, we had spying on the grown-ups, we had clues and treasures to find, and we had booths where institutions of further education introduced their stuff to kids about to graduate. The grown-ups manning the booths were, of course, also parents. The first comers, the newcomers, were sorted, sorted into houses. On sign-up, we had asked the players what house they would like to go to. At the LARP, one teacher took them aside and did some magical testing, basically telling their fortunes from drawing cards or asking what animal they were thinking of. The teacher made copious notes to make sure she got all this vital information down. Then at a grand ceremony in front of the whole school, they get divided into the houses each of them asked for on sign-up. <laughs> They'd already forgotten about it. Each newcomer was announced separately and then welcomed to their new house with cheers. A small initiation ritual was held at the houses where they got the house pin and learned the house chant. The oldest students graduated and were given, given diplomas with grades. On sign up, they had been asked what topic they're good at and what they're bad at. And by now we knew them well enough to also give them grades on their behavior and other such topics. The house cup was always problematic. You know what I'm talking about? The teachers give points if the students do as they're told. This encourages very boring play. What we as organizers want the kids to do is to skip class, to explore the school, to defy the teachers, and to steal their candy. Now, in most games, like in the Harry Potter books, the plot is that the adults refuse to see a blatantly obvious threat to the school, and only the kids can save the day. But if we deduct points for it, this discourages them from doing exactly what we want them to do. So usually we just forego the house, house cup and the house points. But this time we went all in. We told them the houses are tied. We had actual physical cups where you could see the points, marbles. Today the house cup will be given to the house with the most points, finally. And during the LARP, all the teachers had mini quests for getting points, and some of these were nasty behavior, like stealing a one from another teacher. So we could encourage the kids to explore the dark sides of their characters and, and, and the world. In the Harry Potter books, there are important elements uh, that rarely make it to regular magic school LARPs. Things like racism and transphobia. That's a joke. <laughs> Good riddance. But also things like parents, graduation, the sorting hat, and the house cup. This way we managed to bring that experience to the young LARPers too. At the end of next month, we will have a classic Magic School LARP again with classes. Maybe something Halloween themed. A regular school day, except that a monster attacks at the end of the day. Which, from the perspective of the players, of course, is a regular school day. But now, the players will have experienced in-character level up, transformation and initiation, hopefully giving them much stronger ties to the world, the school, their house and class, and their characters, and maybe even the art of LARP. If at your magic school you have done something similar, or better yet, something different, please tell me later. Thank you. <laughs>